I'm so nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous, but hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. If you're back here, nice to see you again. Today I just thought, um, I mean we're like two weeks into 2018 and whatnot, but today I just thought why not like record a video of like a recap of my 2017 so like the struggles and the blessings and how i got through certain things and and yeah hopefully i'll be able to obviously um i don't know i guess give advice i don't know if some of you guys will be able to relate to some of the things that i talk about i'll be giving advice so hopefully it's constructive and you guys can take that in and become a better you I'm annoying, don't ever do that again. I'm just gonna um, give you an insight of my 2017 because I'm a person that actually, I reflect on myself quite a lot. Like I criticize myself a lot um, and I'm always like looking for ways to explain why I behave the way I do or why I think the way I do or why I find certain people attractive. Just little things like that. I guess it's because I'm a psychology student. <laughs> Duh. I'm a psychologist at heart so I just like to analyze things and I feel like it is very constructive to be able to reflect and see what you've done wrong what um what you've done good what you can improve on and stuff like that because it literally all contributes to your growth if you can sit back and be like this is what you did wrong this is like it will contribute like you'll learn how to deal with situations better and stuff like that so yeah I'm encouraging you guys to become more reflective on your behaviors and your thoughts and all of that yeah so first of all, I just want to start off by saying that there's people in worse off situations than I am. So I just want to thank God. Um, I've become very thankful for all that I have. Um, just because I have everything. I have my senses, I have food, I have family, I have friends. Um, I've got an opportunity to go to uni. Like, I've got, I've got a lot in this life, you get me? So this is not a video complaining or anything. Like I said, it's just a reflective video of my 2017. So yeah, I just want to thank god and that actually takes us to the first segment so basically 2017 i feel like is the year that i got rid of like all negativity from my life like legit all of the negativity from my life. i feel like i was a completely different person like before 2017 i don't know why what was i saying so yeah 2017 was the year like my first full year at uni because i started uni in october 2016 so then obviously 2017 yeah because my academic year started in october 2016 so like 2017 was like my full uni year like a full uni year if that makes sense from that transition from college to university was like a big step for me because um i left home if you don't know i used to live in leeds yes i was living up in leeds and um i decided to move out for uni which is actually something i wasn't going to do whatsoever like at the time yeah <laughs> at the time applying for uni I was thinking my first choice was actually Leeds University um, because it's, um, what did they call it? It's a Russell Group, <laughs> yeah, it's a Russell Group University. So I was like, I need to go to this uni because I'm great. The uni that I go to needs to be great. So, so at the time, yeah, at the time I didn't really want to move out because I was with someone. So I wasn't, I didn't want no kind of long distance relationship or whatever. So that kind of influenced my decision. So I was going to stay in Leeds and I was going to move out of home and perhaps live with my boyfriend or whatever um but that didn't go to plan <laughs> that didn't go to plan so um but anyways long story short i didn't get to the uni that i wanted to go to so i didn't get to the russell group that i wanted to go to so i ended up having to go through clearing i didn't really want to go to all the other uni like i had over you have think you have like five options when you're applying to uni when you're applying for ucas but I, don't think I wanted to go to the other unis or I didn't get into them, I can't remember. But I definitely didn't get into my first choice. So I was like, I had to go through clearing. So went through clearing now and here I am. It's actually like four hours away from Leeds. So I moved out quite a long way away and I moved out for a reason. Like I legit chose this place because it was far away from everyone in Leeds, <laughs> legit. Like I wanted to be away. Of course, not from my family. I love my family. Um, if my family could be here with me, I'd be, here with them but i just wanted to move away from leeds like all the people from leeds like i just wanted 
I wanted a fresh start basically I literally wanted a fresh start and I feel like it was actually the best decision that I've ever made in my life because um, it has contributed a lot to my growth so if you're applying to university I strongly recommend you branching out and moving away from home because it can genuinely genuinely <laughs> it can genuinely build you as a person like you'll your character will legit like form and your independence all of that like you'll be a strong independent woman yeah yeah before i moved to uni i was obviously in college and i wanted i wanted to move as far away as possible from leeds as i could just because of the negativity like i really wanted to move away from all the negative like perspectives i had on the people on the city like i just wanted to move away from leeds and i felt like just go as far as you can joy so i moved four hours away when i say negativity in college i used to be such a troublemaker like <laughs> i used to be in college i was so i don't know if this is but yeah in college i was like such a troublemaker like troublemaker in the sense that i was like i was I was the angry black girl like I was literally I was the angry black girl I would go off on everybody and anyone like I would I even ugh, I even got kicked out of college for fighting but that's another story for another day just because I was I was being dumb I was making irrational decisions and I was just arguing with anyone and everybody like I was I was I was literally like I was on one I was just angry I don't know what I was angry at if I thought anyone was looking at me the wrong way legit I remember one time <laughs> I think this was like so I did my first year of uni, no, I did my first year of college and then um, I got kicked out so I had to do like, I had to do, um, I had to do like a gap year so I got work experience and then they allowed, they allowed me to come back the second, to do, to finish my second year and I remember even on my first day like you think I was a restored bitch, you think I learned from my lessons, you, you think that you got kicked out, I mean something needs to add up Joyce but no I was still going on reckless so I remember I think this was like the first week of college first week back obviously I already knew people there so I wasn't like uncomfortable or I wasn't shy or anything like that I was like back in my premises bitch you know that ones so I remember I was like I was talking to like I don't call them friends but I was talking to associates um I think it was like around break time and then there was like another group of like girls and I I, I I can't remember I think they must have thought we were talking about them but um one of the girls like looked at me she turned around she looked at me like this and give me one dirty stinking looking eye roll and I just thought It sounds so bad, but I have no issue with like confronting people. Like if I if I need to at you, I'm gonna at you. Like if I've got an issue with you, I'm gonna let you know. That's literally how I am. I've kind of turned it down a bit, but that's my personality. Like nothing can run with me like that. Like if I've got something to say, I will definitely say it. Like I don't filter anything. You get me? So I went up to her and I was like, she's me. Is there an issue? And she was like, no. I was like, well, you're looking at me some type of way. If you've got something to say, then I'm going to need you to say it. When I leave, you want to keep doing this. But then when I come around, you don't want to post up. This was literally Joy's all around. Like, if I got the slightest instinct that someone's trying to at me, that someone's trying to come for me, I'm going to at you first. Like, I'm going to come to you because you're not going to take me for a dickhead. That's, that was actually my mood uh, for the, like, three years, legit. Not even three years. That, that's my mood for stop. So you'd have thought Joyce would have learned her lesson after getting kicked out. But no, I was still doing what I wanted to do. I was still acting the way I wanted to act. And, yeah, and I feel like if you have... If you're around a big group of people all the time anyway, I feel like that kind of, that that leaves a lot of room for like, that leaves a lot of room for drama. I'm not even going to lie to you, regardless if it's black people or white people, I just feel like having like, being around like too many people all the time, like a big group of people all the time, not all of them were my, not all of them were my friends, but the fact that I was around them all the time, I feel like that did, um, open door for a lot of drama a lot of negativity and i was probably like the center of that negativity i can't lie to you i didn't help myself i was very um like stubborn and very like stuck on my views stuck on my ways like i didn't want to change i was like i'm the baddest bitch now what still the baddest bitch could have cat on that that's not that's not me anymore like i said that's 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 not even me that's not even me man that's not even so yeah this is my last year of college i was still getting in arguments i think i was arguing with this girl um for quite some time over this guy that i was with um trash anyways
there was this girl specifically that I was um, arguing with a lot and like her and her friends like I, oh, me oh, me and my days oh my god I'm literally thinking about my action I'm just thinking Joyce like why are you like this why are you actually like this basically long story short this girl must have done something with the guy I was with at the time or wasn't with because they were I was hurt so I was, um, I must have, I felt like the girl was, in, like I said, if I feel like someone's trying to come for me, trying to indirect me, I'm going to come to you directly. So I thought this girl might, have, I thought this girl was coming for me on Twitter. I think actually one of my friends in the group chat was like, Joyce, look at what she's saying about you. Nah, nah, nah. So I was like, is it, is it, is <laughs> I must have gone on Twitter and I added her and then her friends joined. No, she didn't, she didn't even, I, I must have added her, but she didn't even respond. Her friends were responding for her. Her friends were fighting her battle and then my friends got involved and then it was just, it was just so much all because I, I, I must have, what did I say to the girl? I don't even want to put this in because I'm a new bitch. Yeah, I'm not going to put that in. Basically, long story short, I must have added her. I must have added her and then her friends got involved, my friends got involved and then and then I remember getting called into college because of it because oh my god that day was actually crazy because it started off like me adding this girl, she didn't respond so her friends started adding me so then my friends got involved and then I don't know some guys got involved and then the guys ended up meeting at a park and then fighting like it all escalated so quickly I was so confused and then I remember going into college the next Monday I'm getting called into what's his name is it a, is it a principal I don't know what the, I don't know what you call him but I must have been called into the head teacher principal or whatever's office and then he was like it looks like you haven't changed your ways no 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 I was like what you mean I ain't do nothing and then he was like, no, Joyce, you need to change, blah, blah, blah. If you don't want to get kicked out, you need to get your shit together. And I even remember my business teacher, we were quite close. She was a very nice person. Um, yeah, so she was like, Joyce, um, I heard you got in trouble again, blah, blah, blah. You need to stop, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, at the time, I didn't care. I was like, I didn't do anything, so... But yeah, I didn't feel like I was doing anything wrong at the time, but... Um, so my attitude was just like, whatever, I'm not, I haven't done anything, so leave me alone so i hadn't improved or anything from then like i was still i was still mad i was still planning on fighting whoever was pissing me off so um i ain't even got beef with anyone i'm just here to tell my experiences tell my viewers my experiences so don't get hurt like the group of people that i was around in college was just not healthy for me i just remember like we used to argue over the dumbest things like just because it was like such i, th I feel like it was such a big group so like there was very there was hella room for drama misinterpretations all of that so like i remember like we even went out we even went out for drinks one time like a friendly drinker oh it's someone i think it was someone's birthday yeah we went out for drinks like at yates and all of a sudden like everyone was busting bats blah 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 one person said the wrong thing and it just went it just went oh. It just went hectic like shots fired here shots fired here and then it became like it became legit uh, an argument it literally became beef it was just such a bad group to be around it wasn't healthy at all because it was it was that kind of oh shade it was it was a shady group you get what i'm saying so shade was thrown all the time if you took it to offense then it's your problem but there was always there was but there was always like some truth to that shade so when people if you thought someone was bantering you you didn't really know if it was banter because they're not really your friends so you don't know if they're bantering or if they're trying to actually throw shade if they're actually trying to indirect you so it was that kind of friendship group it wasn't friendship like i said it was associates so i wouldn't even call them friends um when i say them i'm, I'm talking about the group as a collective because there's still people from college that i speak to today and we're very much cool and i love them and we don't talk every day, we don't keep in contact every day, but they know, love you. It was just that kind of group, like you didn't know whether someone was being shady for real for real, or if they would be shady banter, like you, you never knew, so you always had to be like on, a def on the defence, That's that was my approach anyway, like that's how I deal with um, any kind of negativity, like any kind, that's how I dealt anyway, that's how I dealt with um, any kind of issues, like I always just put up this defence, defence, I turned into bad bitch Joyce. I turn into bad bitch Joyce and I think I can beat everyone up. That's literally, that was literally my um, coping mechanism. Like I said, I probably didn't help myself either. I'm not blaming everything on the people I was around with because like I said, I'm very confrontational. Um, I don't take anything lightheartedly. Like if I feel like you're coming for me, then you're coming for me, you get me? So um, 
yeah i was always on the defense i was always ready so like i said nothing really changed throughout that year so when i moved out for uni it was a big change because i felt like i needed to get away from those people i needed to get away from lees i just felt like i'm not growing as a person like i'm still doing what i'm doing like i'm still behaving the way i behave i'm still thinking the way i think like i'm not growing like this this is not helping me so obviously moving out for uni was like one of the best decisions for me because i felt like i obviously had to get away from those group of people and just get away from leads in general because whenever i just associated um i just associated my whole living experience there as is it is it being negative because the people i was around they wasn't really helping me with anything they were just contributing to that angry self that i had in me so i was like no i actually need to leave leads like i can't be around these people all my life like they're not helping me and like i said i always had to be on the defense mode with these people like i didn't feel like i had to be myself i always had to be cautious of like are they coming for me are they coming for me you know so the lesson i'm trying to teach here is basically um if you feel like the group of friends that you have at the moment and um, especially those of you who are in high school college even university us growing people just find us find ourselves in groups that are not necessarily helping towards our growth or necessarily helping us to where we want to be so you actually need to take a step back and be like well are these people really my friends are these people do these people really care about me like why why am i around these people if you don't like the person you are around certain kinds of people then you really shouldn't be around those kind of people because they evoke certain behaviors i'm a psychologist and a social psychologist says our behaviors are products of our environment you being around negative people all the time people that are always shading you people that are always i don't know like people that just don't contribute to your growth like you're not gonna grow and the way you behave is a reaction to how they treat you you get me so if they treat you in a way that brings out that angry self that that um i don't know that insecure self that um emo like whatever whatever like negative emotions they're bringing out of you you need to be like whoa this is this is not healthy for me i need to take a step back because certain people are not meant to be in life like some people are obviously just coming come into your life for a lesson you get me and i feel i i genuinely feel like those people like the people i met throughout like college and stuff and high school even everyone you come across in life teaches you something teaches T gives gives you a solid life lesson you get me and i don't know my lesson from college was basically i don't know i need i need to surround myself with the right people because only by surrounding myself with the right people i'll be able to um become the person that i want to be as in i'll be able to you know be 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 who i want to be around them be comfortable around them be i don't know and that's why i'm so thankful for the friends that i have at the moment although i have obviously my best friends from leeds um i've made amazing friends at uni and i thank them so much because all of that that i was experiencing in leeds like i don't tell my friends this often but i actually love them like i genuinely love them i genuinely love my friends because i feel like oh my god you turn up <laughs> why am i crying yeah so that's why oh i'm still crying what is wrong with me um so that's why i'm so thankful i thank god every day for the friends that i have around me now because i feel like <laughs> oh my god joy stop it get it together i didn't think this was that much of a touchy subject for me yeah that's why i thank god every day for the friends that i have and the people i have around me because i genuinely feel like they contribute to everything that i am today oh my god yeah they contribute to everything that i am today like they motivate me to record they motivate they actually they gave me the encouragement to start youtube um they support me they support me so well they even they even force me to make videos sometimes like there's times where i'm not feeling my best self and there's times when i'm like low and i'm comparing myself and i don't believe in myself and they was like no joyce do this do that there's many times i thought of like oh there's many times i thought of quitting youtube because i was just like oh there's many times i thought about quitting youtube because i was just comparing myself a lot and i just didn't think this i just didn't think i was going to succeed in anything that i was trying to do and the people i had around me my friends they encouraged me a lot like choice you can do it no 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 don't quit 
<sighs> I'm just letting yeah they they support me a lot and like I said I feel like they contribute to who I am because when I'm around them I just feel like I'm myself like I don't feel like I have to filter anything or be I don't feel like I have to like filter anything around them I feel like I can talk to them about anything and I'm never like on the defense with them because there's nothing for me to be on the defense about because these people are genuinely my friends and they care about me whereas before I was obviously in a bad space um the people I had around me weren't helping me so I felt like the world was kind of against me legit like I legit felt like the world was against me that's why I was so angry all the time so defensive all the time so I reacted to things really quickly so I thank God for the friends that he's oh my kid oh my kid he's not gonna watch a video and think Joyce what the fuck are you crying <laughs> are you crying I was in a bad space so I thank God for blessing me with more friends that actually care about me and care for my future and only you know I'm surrounded by positivity that's literally what it is like I'm just surrounded by an amazing group of girls yeah we love each other or whatever it's true when they say you actually find lifetime friends at uni because literally the friends I have now I bloody love them I'm not saying that I'm not like confrontational anymore like I'm not saying that's not part of my character anymore Certain, I feel like certain situations are obviously gonna evoke that that trait more than other situations if that makes sense for example obviously with my example if I'm around negative people all the time if I'm around people that are shading me all the time I'm gonna be on the defense mode you get me um for example if you're going to a job interview you're, you're probably gonna show that you're extroverted and you're social because that's what they want so you're gonna bring that personality out so what I'm trying to say is basically it's a matter of dealing with your emotions you need to learn to kind of suppress the unwanted feelings and like uplift the person you want to be the characteristics that you want to be displayed so i'm not saying that i'm not confrontational whatsoever anymore i'm not saying that i don't have an attitude anymore because i sure do have an attitude you get me but i learned to, i learned to turn it down like took my attitude down on watch like i know when to turn up when when, when not to turn up you go i'm saying i'm more selective with what i give my attention to so my main aim going into 2017 was like i need to remove all negativity all this anger all this hate blah 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 it needs to be gone like so me having this new group of friends that actually care for me and love me contributed a lot to that so i didn't feel any type of way like i felt like life 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 is great you know? i have a great group of friends around me so i have nothing to complain about in addition to that like i said i have to i have to focus on myself because if i'm focused if if I'm focusing on myself, like there's no room for like any, there's no room for any wahala to be honest, because I'm all about me and mine. So what's what's bringing me stress? What's causing me stress? Like there's there's gonna be no room for that. Like if I'm minding my business, then there's no way I'm gonna put myself in situations that I don't need to be put into. I'm, there's no way I'm gonna find myself in situations where I don't belong. You get me? Because I'm all about me. I'm all about mine. I'm gonna focus on me all of that so you minding your business kids i tell you just mind your business and drink water just drink your water and mind your business because this life like you can't kill yourself honestly you can't be focused on what other people are doing like just mind your business don't let other people's um thoughts and feelings affect you you just take information from the people around you the people you love the people you care about and you're feeding obviously yourself that good energy you're focused on yourself how are you then gonna be anywhere near the negativity even if negativity comes like you should just be like that's that's actually not my business that's a personal problem i was actually minding my damn business all 2017 surround yourself with the right people <laughs> you know what they say about is it birds of the flock flock with the feathers what is it but feathers of the bird birds of the flock anyways anywho yeah so just be mindful ha <laughs> mindful of joy yeah yeah just be mindful of the group of friends that you have around you group of friends that you surround yourself with group of friends that you um find comfort in and tell your problems to so some people are generally not genuine like that so you just need to be aware just analyze analyze your surroundings sis, because not everyone is your friend so yeah so that was the whole negativity part of side of things that i was dealing with i was dealing with a lot of anger a lot of hate a lot of there was just a lot of negativity and i feel like when when you're angry when you're 
um, just consuming yourself with like negative thoughts about yourself and other people I feel like that affects your mental health a lot like I felt like I was dealing with anxiety 24 7 legit like but my anxiety levels were always high like they were li I, I literally felt on edge all the time do you get what I'm saying and it wasn't because yeah it was this whole notion of like I'm ready to pop off you get me I was always on the defense so I was like expecting people to come at me like I I assumed no one like you know what I'm saying so I always had like this defense like I was always like prepared my fight or flight instincts were literally active 24 7 what is, what's what's my fight and flight system let me see if I can remember let me see if I've been doing my revision my fight or flight so it's so we've got the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system is your autonomic and your somatic so your autonomic has your sympathetic sympathetic pathway and it has your parasympathetic pathway and it's my sympathetic pathway that allows me that gives me that fight or flight kind of reactions and i felt like that was active all the time like i always felt on edge i always felt you know and anxi anxiety is a difficult one to explain it's like it's one where it's like let me find let me find the definition real quick for you so it says here Anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So basically, my anxiety was literally due to confrontation because I was already, I was always ready to pop off. I was always ready to confront people and I always expected people to come for me. That's why I was always so like, yeah, it was just, even talking about it now, it gets me a little bit, but I'm Gucci. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on from that. I feel like I've spoke about it a lot. Just because it was like a big accomplishment for me, like to not be so angry and not be so confrontational and not have so much attitude and yeah, and remove all the negative thoughts from my head. Like it was just a big step for me and I feel like Honestly, I'm not even like trying to bring like Bible scriptures or anything like I'm not here to, to preach But I'm definitely gonna give my testimony. Um, I definitely want to have done it without God. I feel like Prayers do work guys when I tell you Prayers do when I tell you I used to be I was just a different person and I feel like God has actually worked in me and I'm so thankful for that I'm so thankful for who I am today although I've still got a lot of growing up to do like I'm still very thankful for what he's allowed me to become in this very moment um yeah moving on <laughs> um let's talk about uni if I'm being completely honest I don't feel like the course I don't feel like my course was challenging in any way like I don't feel like it um I didn't feel like it was any more difficult from what I had done in A level. To be honest, I feel like my first year of college, my first year of um, university was basically my my second year of A level. Like I didn't feel like any kind of any kind of um, increased stress or any kind of if if anything, A level was probably harder. Like I didn't feel like I didn't feel like my first year of uni was stimulating enough. Like I didn't feel like it was difficult enough for me. Although obviously I didn't come up with the top grade. I got a two one. I genuinely feel like I chose like the best possible course for me like I feel like this course actually suits who I am so much like I feel like it was intended for me to take psychology I was always meant to be a psychologist I remember taking a personality test and the results were literally these people tend to go on to you know this kind of profession and mindset obviously the psychological kind of counseling and side of life and when i saw that i was like rah so i was right maybe this is a sign i need to stick to what i'm doing i'm on the right path so first year of uni i'm saying first year of uni 2017 um i didn't find my degree that challenging i am um, i i was happy with the course that i was doing but i didn't feel like um it was any different to what i was doing in a level i wasn't i wasn't as stressed as i should have been I still came out. I wasn't. I didn't put. In, I didn't. I did not put in work the way I should have done because, like I said, that was A level knowledge. I should have been hanging out first, but I didn't. I didn't put in the work I should have been putting. Obviously, I did my my typical library night shifts or whatever, but like I didn't. I didn't actually put my all into those exams or those essays or anything. Um, felt like I was in a good space if we're talking about obviously course wise. Um, I did. There was a few lectures that kind of did like get on my nerves a little bit the main struggles i was really facing with my course were these lecturers that just really didn't care 
for your education. Like, I felt like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm the only one that says this, but um, you need to appreciate your teachers in college and high school or whatever, because they, they put so much like, they put so much effort and time into dedicating things for you guys. So yeah, if you're all going to uni, just beware of that. Not every lecturer cares. Obviously we do get the good lecturers who actually put time and effort and engage. And yeah, those are the good lecturers. You need to cherish those lecturers. So, so the next segment I wanted to talk about was me passing my driving test. Anyways, I passed my exam, my practical test last year, June. Fine. when I told you it was a struggle, like it was a struggle. I wasn't struggling with driving because I know how to drive, like I'm, I'm a boss at it anyways. So it wasn't the fact that I couldn't drive, it was the marking or the observations. I don't know, I don't... Anyway, so basically I'd passed my theory like at least, I think it was two years or it was coming up, oh my God, it was coming up to two years. That's why I was in so much pressure to pass my practical test because I'd basically done my theory first I got my theory over and done with and then I just started doing um practical classes and I swear to you I kid you not I changed my instructor like five times first instructor yeah my very first instructor he was just rude like he didn't understand that I was obviously a learner I'm gonna make mistakes he he was not having it like I remember one time I think we must have been going down a hill and I was trying to slow down obviously I'm a learner I was trying to slow down but I was breaking I was breaking too harsh so then he was like, if you break like that, <laughs> oh, 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 it's getting me mad thinking about it. He was like, oh, if you keep breaking like that, I'm going to tell you to get out of the car and walk home. I said, what? I'm pick. Is it? All right, so I finished the lesson, went home. I called up the company. I said, I need my money back because I'm not dealing with this instructor again. Like I'm not doing it. Like I'm so change that one. Then I went to, who did I go to? Oh, I went to this guy who um, was referred to me by a friend of mine. And then she was like, she passed her, she passed the driving test within like a month or something. So I was like, oh, I definitely need to take up on this guy. So I started now practicing with this guy, but then I ended up leaving him as well because you know when you're learning and you want to do things yourself, I felt like he wasn't allowing me to make mistakes. Like the other guy, he'd shout at me for making mistakes, but this one, he'd correct me. Like instead of, instead of teaching me so I can correct myself, he was literally taking over the pedals and doing it all himself. So I thought, hey, <laughs> so what am I paying for? Like, like, what am I actually paying for? So who's, who's supposed to be driving? You're me, boss. Like, come on, like, teach me. I learn by doing, so you need to let me do it. So I think I left him and then, oh, oh yeah, I left him and then I found my, I, I decided to go to AA because AA are basically, who else is better than AA? So I went to AA and I loved this instructor. Like when I told you, I loved him. His name's Mohammed from Leeds. If you're learning to drive, go to Mohammed from AA because he is amazing. Like he was so patient. He was so informative. And so he was, he was amazing. Um, I basically learned nearly all my driving through him, but then I had to move to uni. I had to move for uni. So I had to find another instructor. Um, so initially, Initially, I wanted to go with AA again, but apparently there was no instructors in my area or I could only do like one hour every two months or something. Like it was very, there was a drought basically with instructors. Um, so I had to go to Red instead. So I ended up going with Red. Why did I leave that one? Why did I leave that one? Oh yeah, I remember why I left. I remember. Imagine, yeah. Obviously, I like, I like interaction. I like talking to people, you know? You know, it's nice sometimes. But I'm learning to drive, and you're telling me stories of how your, um, how your wife, how your ex-wife's dad wanted to kill you, how you ended up in a mental hospital, how um, you were accused of this and that. While I'm driving, I don't need, like, I don't need that. Like, I just felt like he was getting a bit too personal, you know, um, confusing the roles a little bit. Like, like, this is not the relationship I signed up for. So I switched, I switched instructors and then um, I ended up finding an A driver, an A instructor, sorry. And then, yeah, he just led me to the finish line. <sighs> Let me tell you, I failed my test four times. No, 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 no. I failed my test three times and I passed on the fourth time. Imagine throughout those three practicals, those three times that I failed, I had the same examiner. You know, you know how frustrating that is. Obviously, you're 
trying for a second time you think okay maybe it was the examiner last time maybe this one's gonna be a little bit nicer to me you get me but it was the same damn examiner for those three times and guess what on the fourth time it was a different examiner and guess who passed their practical me so what does that tell you other reasons why i felt like i can leave my job is because i was saving up to go on holiday so if you don't know if you don't follow me on snapchat and um, if you haven't seen my thailand vlog probably be somewhere i'll try and link it somewhere I went to thailand in july and i went to angola back home <laughs> if you don't know i'm angolan african angolan painting yeah that's me anyway thailand let's talk about thailand thailand was amazing like it was actually like the best experience like when i i encourage everyone to travel like listen just save your peas and travel <sighs> traveling is just amazing thailand was beautiful like there was so many islands that we visited my favorite one was my favorite one was fifi island like there was just so much greenery it looks so beautiful like that island i loved it and obviously there was a james bond island amazing being in thailand i actually people say that this is not a big deal or whatever but i feel like i did face my fears in thailand so basically i have like this fear of like open water i can swim like i generally can swim i can swim yeah but i'm only comfortable swimming in a swimming pool <laughs> in a swimming pool so open waters now like i get a bit I get a bit of anxiety, I'm like, oh, I can't do this. Um, in Thailand, obviously, we're cruising around the islands, blah, blah, blah. And obviously, you can jump off the boat and go swimming in all these islands and blah, blah, blah. So I conquered my fears by jumping off a boat. Some people say it wasn't that high, but it was high to me. So the fact that I did that to jump off a boat... <laughs> Just, you know, small steps, I'll soon get there. Cause I can swim, I'm just scared of open water. So one day at a time, maybe 2018, you'll see Joyce. You'll see Joyce do Michael Phelps. But yeah, that was a great achievement for me. Um, honestly, I'm looking back and I just think, oh, I was, so, I was like in a really happy place. Like I just felt like the world was my oyster. This is why I just encourage people to travel. Even if it's like a little city break, like just travel, just leave. If you're feeling like life's getting a bit, a bit much, you know, just, just travel. Like honestly, I feel like it, it can cure anything. Just, just travel. Thailand was amazing. The views are amazing. Beach is amazing. Island's amazing. The food was, eh, all right. Um, what else? Um, the nightclubs, the party life was amazing. Blessing number five is going back home after five years. Five years? Yeah, five years. It was actually, I needed that kind of experience because um, I know I hadn't seen my family back home for a very long time. Um, I, had, I had family members that I hadn't met yet. So I was so eager to go back home and I missed my grandparents. I missed all my uncles and aunties. And I feel like it kind of, it just reminded me of who I am. You know, sometimes you can lose track of who you are. Like going back home legit reminded me of who I am. Like this is this is my people, like this is this is why I'm here, you get me? So it was emotional, very emotional in that sense, especially leaving. And then let's talk about carnival. The fact that God kept me alive to make it to carnival is a blessing. Carnival is just yo. Yo, if you know me, if you know Joyce, you know Joyce likes to dance. You know Joyce likes to wind up her waist a little bit, you get me? So it's actually one of the happiest times of the year. Next is my 21st birthday. So my 21st birthday, God allowed me to reach the age of 21, so I was gas. But unfortunately, my plans didn't go to plan. Um, I was planning on going on holiday solo and take the trip and just live my life, live my best life but I wasn't able to do that. I can't remember why, I just wasn't able. So, um, but thank God for the friends I had, they pulled through, but I didn't get the outfit that I wanted. I wasn't really doing what I wanted to do. So I wasn't like in the best of moods, although obviously it's my 21st, my friends are around me, that's all that should matter. But when I have like my heart set on something and it doesn't go to plan, yeah. This next topic is dating and boys or whatever. You know what, like relationships and boys is like a whole like, I can, I can go on and on about that, but I don't want to right now. So we're just gonna skip that. Just know that my 2017 love life was non-existent. Um, yeah, I'm just out here, man. Moving on to YouTube now. Um, so my YouTube, I kind of want to do like a 
whole separate video on this just because I don't want to make this video longer than what it actually is than what it already is sorry um, basically I was struggling with my YouTube um, basically throughout, <laughs> throughout the whole of um, 2017 um, I was comparing myself a lot to other YouTubers um, I was doubting myself a lot um, I didn't think I was I had what it took to basically obviously be a youtuber um yeah i was just doubting myself a lot i didn't trust the process i didn't trust myself um like i said i don't really want to go too much into it because i still deal with it now and again and i'm praying for it and yeah so once i get the wisdom i'll be able to teach you guys you upcoming youtubers like myself how to deal with stuff like that because it's not really talked about um but yeah so because i don't want to end the video on a bad note i'm just going to talk about a situation that happened um at the end of the year basically my dad got into an accident um, where his two fingers um were basically chopped off he never told me and my siblings about it because he wanted to tell us um in person he didn't want us to be like in shock or whatever so he waited until he came to england my dad lives in africa so he waited until he came to england and he kind of told us um obviously showed us that he was in an accident where like um i think like this metal bar was like shot on his hand and like his two i think it's his index and his um ring finger his index and his ring finger sorry his index and his middle finger or his ring finger and his middle finger it was very sad some people may not think like it's a big deal like two fingers like that's nothing he hasn't lost a leg he hasn't lost an arm but the fact that obviously something you've had for the majority of your life it's kind of hard it's kind of obviously hard initially to deal with not having it there if that makes sense because you never know how much you actually needed something until that was taken away from you so it was quite sad and um, when he broke the news to me he wasn't in my family we're not very expressive um with feelings regarding feelings so we can be we can be very like sad and emotional about something but um we don't usually express that like it's hard for my parents to express things and i think that's obviously rubbed off on myself as well that's why i felt it was really important for me to do this video because i don't always even my friends like i don't always talk to my friends about things that going in my life just because I'm not very expressive there's a lot that's happened in my life that I really don't talk about my dad told me that I was like like I didn't know I didn't know how to react obviously I was comforting him because I saw when he broke the news to us he was like hiding away his hand and stuff like that and he was like really obviously self-conscious because he tells me it's hard but he doesn't express that oh my god like obviously he's trying to be strong for his kids but um like I said some people may not think that's a big deal but if you've had those two fingers for all your life and then suddenly it's taken away from you um that can have you know i was obviously telling him all like don't think anything changes because of this little minor incident obviously it's not minor but i was trying to downplay it i was trying to be like oh no dad it's not nothing like don't worry life is still the same you're still my dad i don't know to see to see my dad like that kind of who it was very emotional for me because I don't see my dad a lot and when I do yeah woo, crying again yeah I don't see my dad a lot so when I do it's obviously a blessing but then this time I saw him and he gave me obviously that bad news so it was like but that taught me to appreciate all that I have you don't understand how much what you have you know is a part of you and a part of your life you need to appreciate each and every inch of who you are of what you have in life like we take advantage of so many things in life and sometimes we're not grateful um but i'm just here to remind you that things can be taken from you within like so i can just be very emotional and when he came and gave me those news like i just I didn't want to cry or break down in front of him but when I got back to uni I actually cried like I prayed to God and I cried I was like God I haven't been you know as thankful as I should have been or should be yeah so I just want to tell you guys and encourage you guys to just be thankful for everything that you have for everything that you're able to do for the opportunities that you have like just be thankful because you'll only you'll only you will only know the value once it's taken away from you so yeah that's that last blessing of the year is finding out that my mom is pregnant my mom is expecting her fourth child 
and I was screaming like I keep screaming I want a baby I want a baby obviously I know right now it's not the right time but I've been getting like major baby fevers so when my mom told me she's having a baby she was pregnant I was like yes bitch that's our baby joking <laughs> yeah so I was like over the moon like oh my god I can live my mommy life through my brother or sister great stuff so yeah that was the blessing that i ended the year with that was the end of my 2017 recap my struggles my blessings thank god i feel like i had way more blessings than i had struggle i feel like 2017 was mainly about me realizing who i didn't want to be by filtering all the all the things that I didn't want to be associated with. 2017, I feel like, was the year of realisation for me. The, the realisation that I didn't want to continue being the person, the angry black woman that I was. So I decided to take certain steps to change my ways. And I feel like 2018, I'm speaking this into existence. I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. It's going to be a great year. I feel like it's the year where I find myself. <laughs> now I actually feel like, because obviously last year I felt like, obviously, I filtered out everything I don't need. So now it's about me. I feel like I need to be tunnel vision and yeah just keep minding my business and working towards my goals well anyways thank you for watching this video if you've made it this long then well done to you like kudos to you because i do talk a lot so thank you if you're still here like genuinely thank you don't forget to follow me on all my social media so it's mfo joy on twitter instagram and snapchat and subscribe of course subscribe to my channel please and thank you <laughs> But yeah, that's it from me today. I feel like I've been talking for a lifetime. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll catch you in my next video.